Hey guys, Chris here. In this video, we are doing the Norwegian high speed run in the Mercedes Benz EQS 584 Matic. The Norwegian high speed run is one of the most important tests and videos we do here on the channel, and it's a battle against the clock over route that is 615 kilometers. So, in today's video, we are not only going to find out how far this car can go on a full charge of battery, but because we're going 615 kilometers, we are going to have to stop and charge somewhere along the way. So charging strategy will be a factor today. And also what kind of charging speed will we actually get now that it is in the end of December, minus one degree Celsius outside, even though we will probably be able to go closer to four or 500 kilometers today. And yes, this car does have a WLTP range of 675, but because we are going mostly at motorway speeds and also that it is cold in winter, we're not gonna get close to that WLTP rated range. And then at the very end of the video, we're going to put this car into chart to see how it actually compares to the competition because I think this car has a real chance today of setting a brand new record. So if you're new here, guys, I'm Chris. I have this channel dedicated to testing EVs. I do range tests, charging tests, I do reviews, and I also do this test, the Norwegian high speed run. So if you like EV content, please be sure to drop a thumbs up, a like on the video down below, and also consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell. So we're at 94% state of charge now. We're gonna charge 11 more minutes, then we'll be at 100%, and then we're gonna be on our way, and I'll I'll see you guys on the road. We have now covered the first section of four lane motorway here on the E18 main road and we are now crossing the bridge that indicates that for you guys who have seen this video before we usually you know do this update right here alongside this bridge crossing this fjord and look at this guys there's a lot of snow outside now but not on the road thankfully we have had we haven't had any snow anywhere on the main road while going on this trip it's wet maybe a little bit slushy but the conditions are not too bad it's not raining, it's just, you know, wet from the snow melting. We had uh, some rainfall, no snowfall yesterday actually, guys. So yeah, conditions are not too bad. And uh, for you guys who are also new to this video, um, on our way down to Kishansan, about 70% of the road is on four lane motorways with 110 km an hour speed limits mostly, some places 100 km an hour speed limits. And when then we have two lane roads like this with 80 and 90 km an hour speed limits. So, if we take a look at the trip computer, average consumption is now 26.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. But according to the wind map, we should have a tailwind of about two to three meters per second on our way down south now. Now we are heading a little bit uh, westward, southwest. So we should now have, you know, a crosswind, headwind, no crosswind, tailwind. So it shouldn't affect the consumption too much. And also guys, we are at 67% battery. So it's interesting to see that we have covered 133 kilometers. And according to the car, we have 347 kilometers of range left. So even though we're doing this in winter, we're probably going to be able to go the furthest we have ever done before charging on this test. That will be very exciting and very interesting. And of course, guys, things like this traffic will also impact the time at the end of the video. So again, this is not a scientific test. We are doing a test in the real world. So we'll have real traffic, real conditions, real weather changes, real wind directions, and also real issues or not issues with charters and stuff like that. This is to illustrate how it is to travel on a long trip with an EV not a scientific test. If you want, you know, the proper uh, test that I do as scientifically as possible, you know, these tests that can be replicated, you're going to have to look at the motorway range test where I try as close as possible to replicate the time and the speed. Link to that video in the description box down below where this car actually performed very, very well. So that's the basis of this trip but i also have to say guys we're going in eco mode and traveling in this car on a long trip is one of the nicest experiences of any ev out there i mean it's so quiet it's so comfortable and also guys i want to show you the head-up display yeah you can see that there usually i'm not a huge fan of head-up displays but this is so large and bright and colorful and clear 
You know, some of these setup displays have gotten a lot better in the recent years, but some of them are very unclear. This is crispy, clear and sharp. And when they are as nice as this, yeah, they are activated in the cars I test. Usually I just turn them off because I don't find them particularly good, especially cars with these, you know, amazing infotainment system screens and gauge clusters. But the head-up display here, yeah, is pretty awesome. So guys, we're just gonna continue on now and I'll catch up with you when we get to our turnaround point in Christian Sam. Welcome to Christian Song, guys. We are now here where we're gonna turn around. We're gonna go into the train station here. And uh, yeah, so we arrived here now. It's about 4.30 and as you guys can see, it is dark outside. And let's take a look at the timer now. Three hours and eight minutes, not too bad. We've had a little bit of traffic, but uh, mostly it's been quite smooth. And if the red light is here when we stop, we're just gonna stop the timer because we stopped the timer. Oh, green already, let's go. Okay, so guys, consumption, 25.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. We've covered 305 kilometers according to the car. And then ignore the uh, time there and also ignore the average speed because we have stopped a few times to buy uh, washer fluid. We've also stopped because there was a uh, uh, a car that had stopped in the middle of the road. We had we stopped the timer then, and also we had to stop to go to the toilet once. So we're not timing those stops. But okay, guys, we are now at 26% battery. According to the car, we have 129 kilometers of range left. And yeah, that consumption also, 25.2, is not too bad. You can see here the road is damp, but we have had mostly wet and a little bit of slushy conditions on our way down. Now that it is red good though, we are going to stop the timer. So the big question is where will we stop now? Because obviously with 129 kilometers of range according to the car, we do have a few options. We're not going to go to the Ionity charters in Lillesand, but maybe that could be a good choice because we can get that peak charting speed. Or maybe we'll go a little bit further. We'll stop at the charters in uh, Grimsta, the mail charters, or maybe in Brukland Saya. Where I really want to go is I want to go to Bambla, but I don't think we have enough range because when we passed there, we were at 60% battery. So obviously arriving here with 26%, we've used 34%. So that means we're 8% in the minus. But okay, guys, I'm going to have to think off camera see where we're ha where we will uh, stop and that guy just ran a red light that's nice yeah not even f i mean people today are not people are like on their phones and not looking and totally zoning out but okay yeah so we're gonna keep on going now heading north and then i'm going to have to off camera just decide where i want to stop and charge Okay, we are exiting at exit 86 northbound on the E18 motorway and we are stopping at the Ionity Charters in Lillesand at the Circle K station here. So even though we have 21% battery left, I monitored the app to see that we actually had vacant charter share. There should be one or two now. And I mean, I t took a decision that I think that just utilizing that extra you know, uh, 50 kilowatts above 150 kilowatts of charging speed, you know, utilizing the full 200 kilowatts. If we can get that now, that will give us a shorter charging time now and yield, you know, a better time overall. So let's see. Oh my God, this was really full. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The app was wrong. The app was wrong. Guys, we are not going here. We are not going here. Wow, there's both an ID4 over there and a Taycan queuing. So yeah, um, yeah, okay. 
So we're going to try to go to the next charting station. Maybe we could go to Bruklandsaya. That would be really awesome. We have 102 kilometers of range left. Yeah. Okay. You guys witnessed that now. Hmm. According to the app, like just two minutes ago, two charters were vacant. But okay, that is not the case. That is the most queue I have ever seen at that charting station. But okay, guys, we're going to continue on now. And then I'm just going to you know, stop the timer for about a minute so we get that time back. We are now at 0% battery and we are running on fumes because we have severely reduced power now and we are barely able to go 90 kilometers an hour behind this truck when it is downhill. And guys, we are still not at the charger. Let's go ahead and check this out. Yeah, 1.6 kilometers away. I think we are just going to be able to make it. So we blasted past the charters at Tvedestrand, the Fortum charters. And the reason for doing that is that they are limited because of the cables not being water cooled to about 125 or 130 kilowatts. The charters up here are the Mer charters. They are 150 kilowatt charters, but the big question is, are they available? Because these are Delta charters. They split 150 kilowatts potentially between two cars if two cars are connected. So that's what we're gonna find out now in just a second. I've been monitoring the charters and the last few minutes, there has been one complete 150 kilowatt Delta charger vacant so yeah we're gonna find that out in just about a second we're now connected and let's see what kind of charging speed we actually get we are now the only car charging on a 150 kilowatt charger because the charging connectors on the right side were actually not working i tried connecting it and then it didn't want to work tried it several times and then there was a kia easel charging on the left side so i just waited until he left like waiting for 10 minutes not any time at all I stopped the timer and I started the timer once we started charging now. So the th nice thing is that we actually have a 150 kilowatt charger for ourselves. The bad thing today is that, I mean, there's so much traffic at charter. Seems like people are going places for Christmas, but we are also getting much better speed than we would have gotten if we just stopped at that uh, charger in Tvedestran. So this is awesome. We're now charging at 142. 141 kilowatts so yeah that is pretty cool so that seems that even though you know we were down to zero percent charge and it is around i don't know minus one or two degrees outside now we're still getting decent speed it also seems that if we were connected to a faster charger we may have even gotten better speed or maybe we would have been limited now to 143 kilowatts let's see if we can start the ignition now also uh, and get some information because once I was really down in the battery percentage uh, we got that red message uh, saying reduced engine power I was not able to get that message away it was stuck to the screen so it seems like just to really warn you but okay guys this is our consumption 25.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and as you guys can see today we were able to go 416 kilometers on a full charge of battery with minus one and a half degrees outside. Guys, that is amazingly impressive for this vehicle, for any vehicle, that is insane, guys. So, okay, we have the charging information here on the central screen. We're charging at 148 kilowatts. Uh, maybe we're also drawing a few kilowatts for the HVAC system. But I calculated off camera that if we go to 55% charge, we will have enough battery to get all the way back to Sanvika. But the thing about this car is we almost had no power the last few kilometers. So I don't want to drain it down to 0%. So depending on the speed, we may just, you know, charge a minute or two extra just to get that um, extra charge. Maybe go to 60, but at least 55%, guys. So now I'm going to find a toilet. I haven't been to a toilet in a while get something to drink and I'll catch up with you guys once we get back to Sanvika.
Welcome back to our starting point or our end point, whatever you want to call it. Welcome to the end of the video. And if you watch this far without hitting that thumbs up button down below, please be sure to drop a like on the video. It really helps the video out a bunch. I really do appreciate it. So thank you very much. But okay, we arrived here with 7% battery. We charged to 55% in Brooklyn Saya. That means we probably could have gone to only 50% and we would have been just fine. But what I experienced, you know, a few kilometers before we got to the charge in Brooklyn Saya is that once we were under like four or 5%, we were severely reduced in power and we weren't actually able to go at normal pace, the speed limit 90 kilometers an hour unless it was like downhill. I didn't want to, you know, risk that. So I charged a little bit more, hence arriving here with 7%. And also once we actually got charging after I turned off the camera, we hit 150 kilowatts and we kept that speed all the way up to 55%. So I'm pretty sure if we, you know, charged at a 200 kilowatt charger, we would have been able to get close to that 200 kilowatt of peak charging speed flat all the way up to you know, 55% and then reducing the charging time, which was 27 minutes even more. But we're going to touch more upon that once we, you know, look at the chart and how this car ranks. And lastly, before we dive into the time, I just want to say that traveling with this S class, yeah, calling it an S class EQS, it's the electric S class. It really is the pinnacle of luxury. I mean, I haven't had this car for more than like two or three days, but it is an awesome car to travel long distance with. These seats are great. It has massage. The stereo is pretty good. And also the sound insulation and ride quality is one of the very best in any car I have driven. And also the range. I mean, this car has almost as much range as a petrol or gas powered, you know, S class with a V8 at this pace, you know, if you want to match this performance. So these EVs are getting scary, scary good. And this is one of the very best, at least to travel long distance with, with tons of space and comfort. It really is awesome. But okay, guys, enough about that. The Mercedes-Benz EQS 580 4Matic completed the Norwegian high-speed run today in six hours and 44 minutes. Six hours and 44 minutes. And look at the chart down below, guys. Temperatures were between like minus two degrees Celsius and plus two degrees Celsius. I mean, you have to go far down the list. I'm probably not even showing you the whole list to get a time that is, you know, or to get a run that is this cold because those times are, yeah, around seven hours or more than seven hours. This car being able to compete with the best times in mild temperature is right out impressive. It's only 11 minutes off the pace of the very best time we have done at six hours and 33 minutes, which was done in much milder and warmer temperatures. I mean, going in the cold severely reduces range in an electric car. Not only that, we had rainy and slushy weather. We also had a little bit of wind today. And we also didn't get that peak charging speed. Just looking at the charging speed alone, if we were able to charge at a 200 kilowatt charger, we probably can expect to shave off maybe five, six minutes off of the time. And if we do that, this car is scary close to the top. And I'm pretty sure if this was done in five degrees plus, 10 degrees or 20 degrees, this easily would have set a new record. Would have been able to take the whole trip without charging? Well, I don't think so because 615 kilometers on, you know, speeds with speed limits this high and on mostly motorway, no EV even now is close to achieving. Maybe the rear wheel drive version with 780 kilometers of WLTP range, but even that car would be cutting it close. But I'm amazed by this car today. And yeah, th the speed, you know, is only almost limited by the human body. Like you have to stop to pee, you have to stop to get something to drink and stretch your legs. This car is amazing and impressive. Consumption could have been better, but of course, this is the largest EV on the market, like size-wise, length-wise, width-wise. I mean, there are SUVs that are taller, but is there a longer and wider and more massive electric car on the market today? Maybe the Hongxi EHS9, but I'm pretty sure that car is going to have even 
higher consumption yeah by a big margin so guys let me know what you think down below i'm impressed and yeah these evs are getting scary close to petrol cars now so guys i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content as always please subscribe see you guys later and goodbye